Hi, everybody, and welcome to your Monday Lighting Critique. I'm going to start initially by apologizing. I'm going to try and speak up, but uh, my, mic my main microphone isn't working right now, so it's going to be a secondary one. So I apologize mm -hmm. if the audio quality isn't all the way there. Um, we do have a couple images to look through. Uh, we're going to start here with this animated shot from Justin. Uh, Justin, do you want to talk us through a little bit about what you updated? Yeah, this is just the full render. It's pretty close to uh, render quality. It kind of tails off and gets a little noisy, but I'll have to re-render. Um, but yeah, this has uh, all the fixed lighting uh, for the backgrounds. Um, yeah, this is basically pretty close to everything, just the full version. This is looking great. Like I don't, I don't really have any major notes. Like I think the character read is really well. The only, the only thing about the robot, uh, the, kind of the eye glow feels a little soft. Um, like specifically right up when she's battling it here, like, like in through here, it just like, there's, there's kind of a, like when you see it in motion, it's just, everything else is so crisp that when that kind of comes over, it feels, it feels almost like, I just want to tighten it up. If there's a little bit of blur on there, I would just make it, um, not necessarily like less intense. I almost just want to like narrow it tighten it so it's not as widespread does that make sense yeah and that for the whole thing for the whole eye glow yeah yeah, the yeah whole for the whole eye glow okay effect. yeah because yep. it's just that everything else feels like really tight and like in sync and and looking really good but that one little thing is kind of being janky does anybody else have any thoughts on this because i think this looks really great um are you rendering layers by any chance or is this just all one big render no it's layers yeah um, I mean, I think that very inexpensively you can render out the, uh, the motion blur passes. I know usually like Mike likes to do them in camera, but like they're so, they're so much, they're so time consuming for me, even on, like on my end, I usually just do like the motion blur pass and then I do that separately and then apply that inside nuke. I don't know if you're using nuke at all, but, um, but you can even like, so the way I do it is I do a separate render layer and I just color the character with like a matte green or something and then get rid of all the AOVs and only do the uh, motion vector AOV for like a, a layer or whatever. It, it, it's pretty cool. Um, it definitely, you, you're, you're going to want to make like your, like a separate script or a separate Maya scene. You're not going to want to do it in your, your other one, but it seems to work for me. Uh, maybe this does have some. No, There's... it doesn't have it. I, mm -hmm. I was going to do that because I hadn't played with motion vectors in uh, Nuke yet. So I was actually going to play with that. So maybe I'll send you a message once I start setting that up. But yeah, I, I think it definitely needs it. But yeah, I couldn't render it in camera. My 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 laptop hates me already. <laughs> You're doing this on a laptop? Oh, no, I couldn't um, imagine. Oh, yeah, it's days. It's days. Wow. Um, couple, a, a couple other thoughts now that I was I was looking at that for a little bit. <laughs> um, if And these are just like total comp tweaks. I would increase, I would lift the dark values on what's inside these tubes just a touch, just because they're a little contrasty. Again, everything else is like really soft and nice. And maybe, maybe on, on some of these other areas, on the other ones too. But I would just like go in there and just add a little bit of value in there. And then if you do add motion blur, this should help. Um, there's like a, a hard edge on the depth of field in, in here on the robot. And. Oh, and then the last one's a problem, just kind of a general problem with this shot, which is when she comes down and there's that like pop of the that robot around her. Like at speed, it just looks it looks kind of odd. So I would almost take that out. Like at speed, it just kind of like it looks like a glitch more than she's actually landing on something. Because um, we kind of lose her spatially in the shot and don't realize that she's coming down in the robot. So you may, if that's on a separate layer, you may just want to take that out for those few. But if not, it's not not the end of the world either. It's fine. It's just like it just like kind of just like flops up there for a second, and you don't really, as the audience, it's kind of confusing. So, okay, cool. Let's hop over into our stills. But this is really good, Justin. For a laptop render, very well done. Yeah, thanks. Very everybody. very well done. Yeah. All right, so here we are over in our stills. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go through these. Let's see. We've got Aaron here, and he helped me locate my toolbar from Photoshop. So uh, he's going to be first up. That is the prize. Um, so first of, all, first of all, I think this is looking um, – well, talk me through it. Like, how, how are you feeling about this? Uh, 
I feel pretty good. Um, I have a, I, so I added, let's see, what do I do? I, so the, the soft shadows of the tree and the house in the background, I could not find a way. So I'm, I'm using a directional light, and I'm specifically using a directional light for uh, my scenes because I'm just trying to get in that game like lighting mode. Yeah. yeah. With soft shadows, it's like they're either soft or they're not soft. It's There's no like controlling, at least I feel like, how soft it's mm -hmm. everything seems to be more like the tools are based on focal point of the camera so, or not focal point but like distance from lens or whatever distance from aperture right Which, even in even with in other software with a directional light like you're not going to get um shadow to like finite shadow control because it's right. there's, there's no sort there's no source point for it it's just rays of light shining infinitely all in one direction so yeah. it can soften, but like it doesn't know where the light source is to like make that calculation of, you know, like fine softening stuff. So yeah, um, I added a in the cooler. I added like another light in the front, facing inward to kind of get like some balance. It might be a little too strong in this version, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's okay. I think it makes sense to me. Like it doesn't it doesn't bother me. But yeah, I mean, like otherwise, like. I guess I feel good about it. I was, I was, I was saying earlier, That's like, strong. I just feel like... That's confidence right there, man. I No, I just feel like that... I can hear Ashley in your background. It's funny. <laughs> I just feel like that some of the creativity in Unreal is because you're kind of like... And I'll talk more about this in the other one I have, but, like, it's more just about, like, well, where are my light sources? Okay, well, if I want to move around, it's not like you can just introduce, like, random light rays mm -hmm. from anywhere, you know? And so you're, you're kind of just limited by what the the level has um yeah yeah i mean i like it i just i would i now i just need to figure out how to render it like at a higher higher quality i mean do you yeah. have like any other notes on it or um what are you trying to i'm sorry what are you trying to render like a higher resolution screenshot or render it as like a higher quality video i'm gonna try to render it as like a higher quality video and just maybe dolly it or something um so this does not have any baked lights for some reason this scene did not want to bake static lights um yeah. so all these i'm sorry uh, yeah so all the lights are either stationary or movable um there's little glitches where like that the blue crate by the freezer like sometimes it's lit up sometimes it's not it's just a matter of how many times are you gonna like disable and enable a light before you get like the the thing back I, I think really something's up with the scene itself because mm -hmm. in my other project in unreal 5 it acts exactly as every tutorial says it should um so so yeah i mean i, I don't know um i'm like yeah i mean i don't i don't know i sorry i just have no idea i think it looks good i just like i listen I, I think it's the same thing that we were talking about with cats right like this is your first project with a new software um the odds of it being like a demo real worthy piece is 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 not um it, it, it like it's 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 like it's a good way for you to get your feet wet in so you can understand the strengths and limitations of the software and then you can go from there right if I think, it needed to be a demo real piece what would you say to fix at this stage yeah. i mean the the biggest the, the the biggest thing for me um so like there's the light sources are there and they all make sense it's it's artistically balancing them in a way like let me let me just play with this so like the one thing that i was thinking about most of all was like let's let's get this foreground to be a little bit brighter and then the background we can take down a little bit let me just do this in an exposure um and that way like like this isn't perfect back there, but like, um, what it can what can start to happen is you can start to pull the audience's eye a little bit closer. Oh, what is? Wait, is that caps lock? Yeah, it is. So, so what what can happen now is with this.
with this front area getting a little bit brighter and the background getting a little bit darker, it can really kind of like pull us more more forward facing. Yeah. Why did it get darker? Anyway, um, do this again. Uh, that that would be one big one. The other ones. I might be able to, I don't know if I have fog in here yet. I feel like I do, but I can actually just add like a, I guess like a dark fog mm -hmm. that basically is thicker in the back and then not as opaque yeah. in the front. So I know that's a tactic they use. Yeah. And then I would, I would even spill this light out even more now that I'm looking at it. Okay. Um, I think, I think, I think it can extend out further and yeah, and like start to influence some of the stuff over here a little bit more. Because I, okay. I, think, I think it would be a big thing to like, yeah. Because it seems to me that it's all about this shop. Like this shop is our main character's place of work or like where they live or, you know, like, or whatever, where everything else just kind of feels secondary to that. So mm -hmm. I, would, I would do what I can to really kind of focus it in there in the foreground. Um, I would add a little bit of, a glow around or like when you're seeing the trees with this with the moon directly behind it you'd see a little bit more of like almost like a light wrap kind of a thing from the brightness of the moon around that i would i would add that if you could um just yeah just make make the moon area slightly brighter overall I mean, the, we've lost the detail in the moon, but but something a little bit brighter while we maintain some of that stuff, just to like kind of make it kind of halo-y, glowy goodness back there, because um, that kind of falls in line with drawing the eye down this way, and that could work. Okay. But I think I think yeah, I think that those would be my main things. Would really pull the eye forward a little bit. Okay. And then and um, I'm trying to think if there's a way and uh, yeah, because once we get more detail in here that'll really help yeah because we get some kind of warmth in there blah, blah, blah. yeah that should work because that'll that'll make him layer up because it almost it almost right now feels like the image ends like here because there's really nothing in this this area to really um that really is giving us too much so so by having some warm light bounce in there i think that could, that could really help okay yeah, I mean, I don't mean to sound like underwhelmed. I just, I feel, it almost feels like cheating. Like this didn't take me that long to do. And I get that like I have a better understanding of lighting than when I started the program. But like, I feel like I got away with something for how little work I put into this. Because yeah. it's like, I'm not waiting for preview renders and I'm not waiting for all this stuff. It's just yeah, like, I, I'm not, yeah, it's just weird. It's a weird feeling. That's the main benefit of all this. So I think you're okay. Um, uh, all right, so let's take a look at your other your other shot here. So your other, so this is, so I had a question about this. So these two, this one, are these different levels or the same level but just like different lighting or? So this is the same room. There's two cameras here, and they're each at the other. They're each at the opposite end of the hallway. And so what I'm trying to replicate is is that inevitably, inevitably, I want to be able to move a camera around this room, and then it look good from any direction mm -hmm. um and then eventually you walk through like a doorway and then it kind of spills into like a room that's got a couple windows and then beyond that there is a like a cathedral almost with all tons of windows and statues and all kinds of stuff and so yeah. like this is kind of my struggle with this one was there are no windows mm -hmm. so your only light sources are these flames and it's like Okay, great. So I put lights in the flames. Now, my only level of creativity I felt like was like, well, I adjusted this one a little warmer than the other, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, yeah, I, that's, and I feel like that's my struggle with when I talk to people who are in the gaming industry. It's like, oh, yeah, like you put your light, it, it just feels like everything in tutorials and everything is like, yeah, we put the lights where there's lights. And it's like, well, that's not crazy creative, right. I guess. The, the one thing I'll say about these two images is like they, like this one, this one feels 
I, I like this one a lot better with all like these darker, richer tones. Yeah. And one of the big things about it too is like we we're getting darkness around the outside of the base of these of uh, the fire basin things. Um, where where in this it almost looks like the light is outside of it because I can see like reflections coming up off the ground. So it's, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I would I would make sure to isolate the light inside of this thing so that like this area can can remain like kind of like this the way that these are darker down there and the light is mm -hmm. just coming out from them same thing with, like this one over here does a really good job of it it's just this one in the middle because i think i think the idea is like i want to make it bigger 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 and we might have extended it outside of the the area of this but i think okay. i think the real power of these shots comes in in these darks like look at what's happening in these dark values right you've got these like warbly specular highlight reflection -y things in here and i feel better like I see more of the ground in this one, but it's cooler here. I mean, the good news is I know exactly what is causing you, the issue you're having, mm -hmm. so that's good. Um, can you just go back to the other one real quick? Yeah. So from the central flame in this direction, because this was like my hero direction I was working on for whatever reason, the two statues on the left and the right in the middle were like just dark. So mm -hmm. the flame is a point light, but then I also added like a spotlight shining basically in this direction, but it's it's obviously flooding too much like darkness out. So I can adjust that. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So this is is this meant to be because uh, I'm thinking too like behind these statues is a space. Again, this is all level design stuff, so maybe. But like, is are there windows back there or like? No, it's just there? it's just a cove behind statues. So I was trying to get something. Cause it was just black it was just straight up dark and that's not like a skylight up there or anything no okay. there's no natural light coming into this room like whatsoever well how did they expect to see anything back in the day that's so i don't know it's a bunch of carbon monoxide throwing up the space of these fires no. um uh i mean i know level design isn't necessarily like your no 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 i was i was so. i was just i'm i'm uh just being i'm just joking but like i think the only th the, the other thing too, I wonder if we can get some more variation in the light color of these, and I'm trying to think of how that would work. Um, just because it's 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 a because like the one thing that's nice about your reference is other than this one on the left, all of them have some sort of fill value that allows for like a secondary color to start to emerge in, like this Frodo at the coming into those gates, like all of this cool light coming in is kind of his solid, like you know, obviously yeah. looking back into this other world. Um, and I'm just like, I was just wondering if there's a way of introducing some of that, like... I mean, there totally is. Right now, my... So you always add, like, in these levels, they always tell you to add some kind of fog. Yeah. You can change the color of that fog. So this fog is a pretty, like... If you look in this image, if you go, like, the back near the roof, you can kind of see that I'm starting to introduce some, like, bluish grays. I can yeah. crank that to, like, try, any try, color Try, try and see, like, I mean, the cooler nighttime colors feels right for something like this. But, but okay. play around with it and see. Okay, yeah. That's all, of, that's all of like one minute. Of, yeah. Of stuff to do. That's that's no. I mean, and then, but I think everything else is looking really good. It's it's really just like leaning as much as you can into the these dark speculars and the in the in the sculptures and this thing back here and the, the tiles and the ceiling. Like maybe seeing more of them up in here would be really cool. Like really really leaning into that aesthetic because I think it's cool. Okay. All right, let's hop over into Ashley's next. Ashley, how are you doing? Hey. Hi. Um, so talk about what changed from the last iteration from this one. So yeah, like I added some of that bounce light that we talked about. Mm -hmm. I made it more of that top-down lighting. I did find some areas where the geo wasn't quite melded together, so there was some light leaking through the wall that didn't look right. Mm -hmm. So I had to like, I had to use like light blockers to block some of that light that was bleeding through. Um, but that's pretty much the things that I did. Cool. So. Yeah, I mean, it's looking really good. Like, I love the bounce light on there. I, it might be a little strong over here on that screen right side. But other than that, I think it's looking really good. The one thing I'm playing around with now is that I feel like there might be too much green on the light coming in from the top. Although once we start to add 
more warmth. It kind of just like, I would take a little bit of the green out of that light coming in from the top. Um, just just to make sure that it feels more like, because this is like strong, warm sunlight coming in as I get hit by strong, warm sunlight myself. Um, and I think that's I think that's going I think that's going well. I think and now after seeing uh, Aaron's and how cool that specularity stuff is, and you have it kind of here in the foreground, it would be nice if that worked up here. Like if we could figure out a way to read this entire pattern kind of up into the darkness, but it, but it's like just in the specular values. Do you know what I mean? Like maybe the outside of the wall, like the the uh, like this part of the wall, like the negative space of the sculpture was like like got more spec. And then the areas like inside here got less. So it was almost like an inverted image, but like up here in that. I don't know. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can do something like that. Yeah, maybe find a way to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, play around with it. Like I said, all these notes are, are, are just suggestions. Uh, so definitely like um, see if you can get a, a little bit more on that. I would also like to see, this might be tough. It might be involved pushing that light back a little bit more this way. But it's almost like, I almost want to read her almost like being hit from the top and almost like silhouetted, if that makes sense. Like, but then would we lose, lose that? I'm trying to think. If there's a way to position the light where we still get this on the, the circular sculpture. Which, by the way, I saw one of those this weekend. I took my kids to the Natural History Museum. And my son keeps talking about the big circle, and that's what we saw. Um, and so I'm just wondering if we can keep that light coming in here. We see that, but the light then hits the top of this. That goes dark, hits the top of her where we can read her like an outline, and then the inside of her goes dark. See if you can get any position like that would work. It would literally have to be where the sun is in a position that's almost like directly above them, that's like kind of between her and this wall. Uh, I don't know if that's possible or not. I don't know. I'll I doubt it. I doubt it. But like, I can, yeah. What I can do. You might be able to, whatever the hole is at the top, if there's geometry you can slide, because you can see in front of her. Oh, yeah. You can see the line of like where the geometry, yeah, like that line, like whatever geometry is causing that, just push it. Yeah, inward. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I can maybe rotate that light and see what happens. Just see what happens. Like, it, like it, it, you could do it, and like I said, it looks awful. Um, but that's 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 what I would. I think the rest of it's looking good. Do you guys have any thoughts? Any other any other ideas? I would only, I, I would consider just turning this one off. Because okay. I think I think just having it right around here is really good. Because there's not much over here that we really want to see. This is nice too. I like seeing the color in this one. That's cool. All right, good stuff, man. All right, let's hop into Austin's next. Uh, we have, uh, we have, we've got your, well, this is the previous version, the updated, and then a little bit more desaturated. So I think like looking at the, the two versions uh, that are updated, I think the warmer one is better. I think the non-desaturated one feels good to me. That feels like just about the right amount of warmth in it. Um, in terms of the rest of the image, I don't. Um, the arm is nice and smooth. Earrings look good. Do, I'll, I'll leave this open for a second to see if anybody has any thoughts on this. I think the fill value looks really good. All right, cool. I think it looks really pretty. Yeah. Austin, do you have any thoughts on this? Do you have any, any any last things you want to do before we start clapping our hands together? Uh, no, I think I'm really happy with this. Yeah, you should um, be. All right, um, let's go ahead. And uh, if you're cool, I will add this to the uh, Hall of Fame, if you're good with that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks. All right, do it. All right, let's clap, guys. All right, one, two, three, here we go. Yay! Good job, Austin. Yeah, like All right. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. All right, last up, we have Mercy. Previous version, we've got her reference here, and then uh, the updated one. So, uh, I love, I, I like where it's going. I, I do miss a little bit of the directionality of that top light coming down. 
now now it, it's like we need to find a little bit of a balance between these two of of um because right now the light kind of feels like it's it's a little more everywhere than it was before so i think i think tightening it up a little bit coming down here um it's like finding the balance between the two i think the amount of bounce light that you're getting is nice um, it's looking really good in some areas it starts to flatten out like on these pillars on the not pillars on those like columns pieces of wood on the wall i should just say it that way um was that oh I guess oh sorry i forgot i wasn't muted you that no i'm just kidding i did that all the time um and then the other thing that i was looking at was the color of the area rug um you might you well you should you should change the um, the value of it because it's got we got some issues. The the biggest one is that like the, the we're seeing a huge amount of brightness right here from the light hitting the brick. But then when it, it's like that light, the second it gets to the rug, it's only like illuminating it a little bit. Same thing over here to the side, and especially like on the back of this chair is getting a lot of light, but I'm getting almost no light on the rug there. So I think we need to pull up the um overall value of the rug itself so it reacts to lights in a similar way than the surrounding objects do um back of this chair looks good that's a little bit of a large texture i would try and pull that down like scale it down a little bit if possible um looking at the brick texture on the wall and i'm wondering if that can come down a little bit in size too because i think it looks great on the mantle but the bricks on the wall feel a little bit big to me. Let me take those down a little bit. Um, yeah, so the main main bullet points of this is tighten this up, um, create some more like I liked having the a little bit like these dark value like these dark triangles in here around it, and then keeping like a pocket of light here and a pocket of light over there. Um, I think you know adjusting the shader on the ground here to get that to match up, um, and then. Lastly, oh, and then check that, and then uh, reduce the those those two uh, texture sizes on the bricks on the wall and on the chair. And then additionally, I would right now there are three uh, main points when when light is coming in from the top through this window and through this door. I think we could limit it to two. I think we should actually kind of turn down the amount of light coming in this door. So it's really just one in here and then a little bit over here. What do y'all think? Do you guys have any thoughts on this? I think the objects on top of this tabletop right here in the middle look really good. Yeah, I think the, I think the like shader wise and, and everything those are gonna those are gonna work out pretty well. Um, I I kind of had to bounce for a second, but in the chandelier there's like a hard line. Is that a Photoshop thing? Is that a comp issue in this image? That looks like a comp issue. Was that me? I don't think I did that. Yeah, no. There's yeah, you're totally. It's like right. there's an there's an alpha issue, yeah. Like right, right. right there. Yeah, you're. Totally oh, right. I was looking specifically in the chandelier, but I don't even see it in the brick. Oh yeah, it's like you're talking about this right here. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of like you if you look down the edge of the brick here, it kind of continues down, and you can see it stop here and then cut over. Um. That's a very good call too. All right, cool, everybody. All right. Well, I will get my microphone issues fixed for you all, and I will talk to you all tomorrow. Um, but thank you guys for the patience again on the um, the time change on this, and I will talk to you all soon. Cool. Thanks. All right, cool. Talk thank to you. Take care, everyone. All right. Happy yeah. learning, y'all. Bye. Bye.